Are we live yet? Are we live yet? You tell me, I don't know, it's just, I need to wait for the email from YouTube to be 100% correct with all these latency everywhere. Uh, but if we're live, welcome everyone. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to the GG Incorporation. Exactly. Um, I need to, wait, I'm, apparently I'm live because I see myself. Wait, Discord. Discord, Discord, Discord. For the people that are not on Discord yet, hey, jump in, jump into the family. Notification pinging everyone. Pfft, I don't care, you know what I mean? Just, hey, once once or twice a week, I'm pinging everyone. Hey, that's, that's the pill we need to take. That's the pill you need to take. So, let's see, who do we got here on stream? We got Lazar, of course. Ori Emmanuel. Faris. Nepuna. What a nicknames. That's insane. Maybe it's your real name. That's even more insane. But hey, in Belgium, we have boring names. Let us be honest. Osama Ibrahim. One of my favorites. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie, guys. Um, okay, we're gonna get back to business very fast. Uh, that's all because of my producers around me. I cannot be in full screen too much, right? This is not just chatting on Twitch. This is just coding. That's what we do. Look at this. <laughs> Beautiful. <coughs> what do you have for us today? Today, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, I'm gonna give you a look. We're gonna, actually gonna do some stuff inside of the SSL tracker thing that I'm building. A very boring project, but also cool. And um, I'm gonna give you a demo first. Let's start with a demo, right? We're gonna give you a demo. Uh, so we do make run. That's the only thing that we need to know if we're programming in Go, right? No need to do other stuff, make run. Let me see. Um, music, fine, local host. I'm gonna scale up these things, right? No worries about that. This one, uh, probably, uh, let me inspect this pagina pagination real quick here. Uh, let me see, security, application, that's fine. Cookies, they are all gone, that's what we need, but no cookies, that's not good for our diet. Of course, this marketing page, hey, this is just a work in progress. Uh, can I scale this thing? Yeah, I can. Let me make this even smaller, because my, you see, my hat is in the way, right? All right, so uh, signing in this thing, um, if I can click this, I already had a video about this over the signing thing, right? So basically, uh, what is this thing? It's calling the SSL thing. I don't know, I have no name yet, so if you have a good name, let me know. <coughs> it's for, <coughs> man, it's the classical uh, anxiety and panic um, things that, that come up, right? Also a little bit of imposter syndrome here and there. So basically, um, the main goal is to let users track their SSL certificates because of course like some people already mentioned there is like traffic and there is a third bot that can do that but you need to understand that we we are millennials well you are probably millennials you're the next generation of technology and we do that stuff but if you're a corporate uh, firm or a firm that's well established or you do some stuff for clients you're gonna have these certificates all over the fucking place. Let's encrypt here, there, every fucking where. And nobody knows when they're gonna expire, right? So what these uh, companies do is they make tasks at Confluent for that, they make maybe Trello tasks, I don't know if Trello is still a thing, maybe in Notion, right? They have all these tasks set up so they can basically track all the uh, expiration dates. Because I did some market research about that, right? I'm not gonna start something, um, <laughs> because I woke up and thought it was a good idea. No, that's the thing. It's completely written in Golang and I have, I think I have the, the sweet spot of how to set up these things. And I'm gonna make a video about that very soon. So uh, it's very simple. Uh, we can add domains here. Uh, for example, I can do, I already have the, let, let me, let me, um, you can inspect the domain here real quick. Actually, stop tracking. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop tracking all this bullshit here real quick, right? Boom. So I'm gonna add a domain here, boom, and I'm gonna say send it.sh, for example. Is this actually I scale it up for the blind homies? Uh, comma separated list, right? Because hey, if you have a multiple domains, you can just paste them in and call it a day. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I also have send it.zip, 
right? I have 10,000 domains and they make zero money. And then I have, for example, the full time godev.com, uh, maybe also a facebook.com, and um, that's and maybe, maybe a bad one like Taskbrain. <laughs> remember Taskbrain, guys, remember that? Uh, and then we're gonna track all these domains and uh, everything is broke. Um, we need to fix that. That's a bug. <laughs> oh, I'm about to say. Hey, like I said, it's a work in fucking progress, right? Uh, good thing we have this. What's going on here? So if you make a mistake, that's we need to fix that. Let's track these domains then. Right, okay, cool. So now we track. <laughs> Found a bug, can you imagine? So <clears throat> we tracked all these domains and uh, we basically have these certificates and uh, this looming thing is basically expiring soon. I need to change that status. Uh, yeah, that's it. So what's going to happen is that in your account, you're going to have this notify me before. It's it's zoomed in, guys. Don't worry about it. It's just zoomed in like, like a shit ton for you, right? So what basically is notify me before is that you can say uh, seven days before something is going to expire, send me an email or even better, send me a Slack notification or send me for the corporate a team notification or even better, send me something with a webhook so I can instantly uh, refresh that with whatever the fuck I'm using to refresh my certificates. Hey, amazing. Still the Patreon link is not opening for me. That's crazy. Maybe you're banned. Maybe you're banned on Patreon. That's crazy. Right, so we can change that. Of course, this plan, I need. I still need to do that. Uh, like I said, it's a work in progress, right? So I can do four, uh, 13 days, for example, save the changes, and it's 13 days, right? Uh, everything is with views, templates, in Golang, and I have, as, like I said, I have, I found the sweet spot uh, to do these things. It's, it's like, it's a lot of hell, but in Golang, it's crazy. All right. That's the thing. For the people that want to know exactly how this is built, all these little tricks I'm doing, I'm making these series on my Patreon page. It's all on Patreon. Patreon. It's all on Patreon. Look at this. Making making 800 a month. It's not for all the value I provide. Come on, now, let us be honest. All this stuff. Project setup from scratch, doing the jungle templates, checking the certificates. And I have still videos that I need to upload, but I'm not uploading them once every day, right? Because otherwise uh, you're gonna get spammed. That's the thing. So, hey, if you wanna be involved, if you wanna learn that, if you wanna be involved in my private community where we do all this cool stuff, uh, private mentorship and all that stuff, check my Patreon, give me some money so I can make you some money. Hey, is that not beautiful? Um, also very important, full-time Godev, 50% summer sale. Check that also. Enough marketing, it's time to do some stuff. What is up, Novan? Um, NS, is, the, is the, the volume okay? Uh, Chino Abraham, I will check what's going on with the Patreon link. I don't know what it is, man. You can just actually, if you see that link, you can just copy, I mean, type it over or something. I don't know. Um, Hey, I'm interested in Go, but people telling me that Go is not built for complex business logics and more so about microservices and low latency scaling and whatnot. What's your take on that? <coughs> um, with all due respect to the people, fuck the people. You know what I mean? It, it's working for me. Maybe it's not working for them. But I'm not them, and you're not me, and you're also not them. So it's something you need to decide for yourself, right? The problem with Go is that there is the Go community, which are a little bit stubborn on the fact that some things are not idiomatic to do. And that is the reason why they still push, you know? That's the reason why they are still in there life because they 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 oh no that's not for go oh, oh, oh no no it doesn't matter it's a language it's open source and you can do whatever the fuck you want with it right 
because uh, listen, I, I, I wrote things in Python not so long ago. I wrote things in Svelte. I built so many projects over the past two weeks. I checked my Twitter. I built in Svelte, I built in Python, and I built in Go, and I will pick Go. I also tried Laravel, but installing that stuff was, I already, I already dipped them. I was already away. I saw it, it didn't work for me and then all did no. It's good if it's if it's set up, but I don't want to hassle with all that stuff. No. I was trying these Docker containers, man. Oh man, what the hell was going on? Uh, so yeah, uh, I have this beautiful thing here, uh, which uses Tailwind uh, with Parcel. It's uh, look at that, guys. I'm gonna show you some stuff, right? So for example, um, let me open up my base template. Look what I have here. Nice CSS. Look at this CSS app, and it's going to automatically do stuff with it. Helper function I made. Then I have, for example, uh, the show page here. Show domains here, click. Look at that, format time. Uh, something else, days left. Look at this, helper functions. So once you know how you can set these things up, your life completely changes. It is what it is. Um, yeah, I built this in a couple, I, I mean, it's just a couple days. I mean, it's it's fine. I'm using fiber and uh, it's amazing. It's 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 amazing. Is what it is. Right. Um, yeah. What what what? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's let's do some stuff. I'm gonna keep it a little bit relaxed. Um, so what I want to do real quick is open up my SSL thingy here. This is my Chrome logic, which I tried and it works. Uh, we did. I did that on Patreon. I'm gonna keep this commented out uh, until I need it, right? So something I wanna change real quick is uh, this function is a testing function with the scrum, right? Uh, this is my inspect function, which basically inspects the certificate with a context. Um, yeah, so like I said, if you build this in PHP or, or Next.js, try to, try to have 1,000 customers with 25 SSL domains and try to monitor them. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck doing that. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna not gonna say inspect. I'm gonna say poll uh, uh, poll SSL poll domain or something. It's gonna be better poll domain. I'm gonna do a little refactoring, and we're also gonna check the um, one thing we're gonna do is here. First of all, let me fix this. Something is borked. SSL test. Yeah, sure. Hold on, mate. We're gonna also measure the latency. And then handlers is probably in the create thing here. Handle domain list, handle domain new, handle domain delete, handle domain show. It's it's that easy, guys. It's it's you just write your handler and 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 that's it. Get authenticated user. Easy fucking peasy. Uh, it is what it is. And in this and these handlers, I'm 100% sure that I have a user, right? Because I don't have a user, it's going to get redirected automatically for me back to uh, where it came from. Um, Paul domain, that's fine. Also very important, what I have is this one. For example, here, uh, if I wanna add domains here and I don't do anything, you see, I get this message here, right? It's of course scaled in, guys. For example, here also account, and I want to do zero days and I save changes. It's going to give me the amount of days to get notified cannot be zero and larger than 178 days. All with, yeah, it's flash messages and it, it's all set up. It's, I don't need to do anything for it. Once you're done, once you set that up, it's amazing. Uh, Minolabs, hey GG, have you, have you given, try to, to Rust? Yes, and Rust is completely different, right? Rust is not for the builders. Rust is for the low level engineers that, um, yeah, for the low-level engineers that want to build parsers, compilers, and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, not for the people that want to build stuff, that want to deploy apps, want to get user base, trying to get some MMR in, trying to scale the company, trying to escape your eight to nine, your eight to nine, your nine to five job. You know what I mean? Live on your own terms, schedule your own day, like my video on YouTube, four hours work, go to the fucking gym absolutely you know what i mean take a fucking nap wake back uh, wake up do some other stuff cook some healthy food and then you go back to work no meetings no colleagues no nothing that's not gonna happen in the rest um 
What if you want to remove notifications? I don't know. I need to see that. <clears throat> so we're going to range these zoom in. So first of all, I'm going to do is this one. I'm going to say make drop, right? I'm going to drop my DB. Yes, drop my migrations. Boom, it's done, right? You see? Uh, easy peasy. What I'm going to do is open up my... Um, DB migrations thingy. Where is this one? Domain trackings. That's what we want. Um... It's fine. It is fine. Um, I also want to do yeah. Uh, last poll. Last poll at. That's gonna be. Is it a timestamp in uh, SQL? I'm not. I'm not not a SQL developer. I'm so sorry. Yeah, timestamp is gonna be not no, probably. Just for the sake of that. Then I'm going to open up my account domain tracking. Update my uh, model, which I call a data, just a data object a structure, right? Um, wait, what's going on here? Uh, hello, your videos mentioned that you have several companies. Could you tell us more about them? It's pretty interesting. Yeah, so <coughs> what I do, wait, wait, let me first quickly do this. Um, that's why I kept the things that I want to do very low level and make all my very interesting topics like for example the stripe i'm gonna use stripe and all that stuff hook that up my authentication i do this all on patreon because it's very hard to stream talk and focus uh so i'm gonna keep these simple things that i want to do right uh let me first do this here so i have uh last poll at last poll at it's gonna be a time time and then i'm gonna have um what was it latency right latency an integer maybe i should yeah it's gonna be fine all right, migration is done, perfectly fine, all right? Um, so the companies, yeah, so basically, what I did my whole life, I worked for startups, right? So I learned the ins and the outs uh, from working at startups, right? Because you work in a small team and you know how they do marketing, you know uh, what investors want, what they don't want. You also know how people behave, right? How, how the rest of the world behaves on something and what I do is basically, I try a lot of stuff out with people or alone. And most of the time, these things won't go anywhere. You never know that up front, right? There is no guarantee success. But I tend to have, each time I have an idea and I believe in it, I tend to make, to, to, to build that stuff. And to a simple MVP, like very simple, right? And you put that out in the open and you see what the reaction is coming from it. And then you can decide two parameters. Are you still interested in it? Because I tend to have the disease of losing interest. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I think in the last two weeks, I've built three or four projects, two with ChatGPT, I all built it in Go, not, not, not all. I basically built them in Go and some other language. So in two weeks, I did a shit ton of projects myself. Kind of working projects, check my Twitter. But I forgot the, 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 the key factor is that I need to keep things boring. Because that works for the long run, right? All this chat GPT stuff, that's all good for now. But at a, at a certain point of time, notion or something else or facebook or google or whatever they're gonna come with their own solution and you're gonna get fucking wrecked right you're gonna get smacked on the fucking cheeks clapped on the cheeks you know no teeth anymore you're gonna search for your teeth on the ground right so you need to find something very simple for example uh, i recently saw something somebody that made a pdf converter like how many pdf converters are there already who's still using a pdf converter <laughs> This guy making seven, seven and a half K each month. Hey, keep it boring and try a lot of stuff. So that's what I did. I tried a lot of stuff and um, yeah, and then some, some things come out, right? Like revenue, for example, is something that basically do well, um, which I'm exiting soon. 
Actually, I'm exiting right now. Uh, that stuff, right? And now it's time for something else. You know what I mean? You just try stuff. And you build stuff. And you don't worry about how many, how many bytes is an int or how performant is this and VLang and, 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 and whatever lang and T stack and four stack and TO and Primogen. You don't, you don't care. And Firebase, Fireship or whatever his name is. You don't, you don't care about that, right? You just pick something you like. You pick something you are proficient in and you build stuff and you pick the most boring database. There is even no need to basically use and a back end and a front end. Why? Why in hell would you do that? Just make everything in one project. Use fucking templates. Easy fucking peasy. What are you gonna do with JavaScript? What's gonna happen? You're gonna you're gonna make a skateboarding game? No. Well. And we're gonna actually implement in this project uh, Turbo Links with uh, Stimulus JavaScript. Well, people are gonna say, what the fuck are you doing? But listen, guys. Once you see how fast I go with this thing and how robust it is with all the typing and the, the minimal technical footprint these projects have. Try to do dependency management for Python. If you have a big Python project, you probably don't know what it is to have a big Python project and have it and come into the dependency hell. Well, I wish you very good luck, right? Google Sheets. Hey, how many people may, hey, to be honest, Ian, how many people made money by just a spreadsheet? Guys, you, you you start need to watch more podcasts, man. A lot of people start with spreadsheets. And then they are so successful with these fucking spreadsheets and then they make an app. <laughs> you have no clue what's going on in the world. That's a bit that's that's a little bit of the problem you guys have. I think you watch too many influencers on the internet which are funny and skillful, but they don't drive you in the direction you need to be driven right you have two routes you have the boring route and you have the route of dopamine and excitement and they all send you into the into the route of dopamine and excitement fancy tech fancy tools right this week you're probably gonna learn rust and the next week it's gonna be something else and then you're bored and you're gonna you go back to javascript and then it's typescript and then it's some other thing and you're all over the fucking place and by the end of the fucking year you know no language at all for 100 percent you have built zero complete projects you have still sitting at your job doing nine to five with colleagues that constant constantly are talking trash man it's time to get the fuck out of there man it's time to get the fuck out of there um, yeah, for example, here's Sergey. My friend had success with selling basic wordless temp WordPress templates. Of course. Of course, people say, yeah, but this domain tracking thing, what the hell, everybody, there are already people doing this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> if nobody's doing it, I'm not gonna, it's, it, no, if nobody's doing it, your idea sucks, <laughs> you know what I mean? The best thing you should do, guys, and take this as an advice. After this stream, you're gonna browse the internet for some project ideas that already exist that you think are doable to make yourself in a weekend or in a week right give yourself a week or two weeks copy and fucking paste that idea make it a little bit better maybe the price a little bit lower people will always come if you can market this if always there's always a market you know what i mean in my fucking uh where i live in this how do you say in this village there are three fucking supermarkets. 200 meters away from each other. You know what I mean? It still is full of people. You know what I mean? There's no, nobody goes to always the same. It's, it's back and forth. You know what I mean? Because there is a, maybe the wait, the waitress, maybe the, the, the cashier is hot. You know what I mean? Then I go to the hot one. You know what I mean? I don't care. You know, it's what it is. Some, 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 some of these supermarkets have these little sonic spinners, you know, for my kids. These sonic spinners for the kids. If you buy for a certain amount, you get these spinners, these toys. Hey, my kids drive me. I need to buy at the at the store where they have these sonic spinners. You know what I mean? It's all about that. Uh, what job titles must go developers search for it? Uh, no clue.
uh, higher order functions and lambda expressions. You have Golang. Golang is more functional than you think, um, to be honest. All right, so let's pull out this thing. That's fine. And then I need to go back. You see, it's hard. The stream, talking, and and coding, and all that stuff. Uh, test get status. That's all we want. As uh, well. Here are we. Pull domain, and this can be commented out. Actually, it's fine. Like this. Go funk. So basically, we do a go funk here. We do context stuff. Um, Time up now. This is when it borks, right? Uh, well, borks. This is basically. Uh, we also need to check that error. We're gonna check that error also that we had in the beginning with this demo demo thingy. Uh, last poll at is gonna be start is fine actually to be honest. And then we're gonna say that the latency time since start milliseconds. Maybe it should be a float. I'm thinking. How do you do a float in SQL? Postgres. <laughs> Ik hou van België. It says Sergi Gregere. Well, yeah. Uh, do it not joke, you're spitting facts. Uh, of course, I'm spitting facts. Hey. You should know that. You should know that. Hey, for the people that are not subscribed yet, hey, subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave some questions in the comment and jump into the Discord community. I know I can be a little bit harsh. I can be a little bit cocky, but that's also a little bit of a character. Uh, and it's something I want to learn you to be confident because that's important. Also, maybe you're not the best and maybe I'm not the best. Like I said before, and I say this all the time on my Discord channel, most of the people on my Discord, most of my viewers are much smarter engineers than I am. Much smarter. But that's not where it's all about. Right? You need to utilize your skills to pay the fucking bills. Because otherwise you're going to get milked by your company. Milked. Fucking milked. Like a fucking cow. Nine to five. Milked. Stand-ups. For peanuts. And what are you building? Nothing. What are you building up? Nothing. You know? Now you are young. Now you are maybe 20, 25, maybe 28. Maybe some older. It doesn't matter. But there is a certain point of fucking time. You're gonna be 40. You're gonna be 50. And that's the moment you're gonna realize... Your life is a waste because you built nothing up. You have no assets. You have just your job, which you're basically depending on. <laughs> you need to be honest. You're probably out of shape. Guys, like I said, this is a fucking wake-up call. It is. It does not need to be in goal. It, it, it doesn't matter. But we need to stop. Like, for example, Primogen. I, wa I watched Primogen because I like him. But I'm not, I, I don't agree with him. I watched a video today from the Primogen. Fuck. I didn't record my, my thing. To record that. Wait. God damn it. It's always the same thing. I always forgot to record my stream. It's crazy. Now we're recording. 60 frames. Okay, cool. <coughs> so he was talking about a letter. Uh, a blog post from DHH, DHH, right? Uh, when I say DHH, in my YouTube, in my Discord channel, the first thing people say is, oh, DHH, he's so... No, because you have no clue, right? DHH, David Heinemeiner Hansen or something. The creator of Ruby on Rails and uh, the co-founder of Basecamp and Hey. And a lot of people hate this guy because he has strong opinions. But, <laughs> listen. Look him up. Look him up on Google. Right. Watch the video from the Prime Agent. The Prime Agent. The first thing he said was, um, "He don't like that guy. He's a dummy." But let me tell you something, because he uses Ruby and all that stuff. Right? But let me tell you something, dear Prime Agent. He's rich as fuck. You know what I mean? He drives F1 cars, whenever the fuck he wants. 
and you you're streaming every fucking day almost <laughs> hey who is the dummy here right eh? you know what i mean who is the fucking dummy so be very careful because boring things and people with strong opinions he is sharing everything what he what he basically does with Basecamp and how they work and everything and that they use boring technologies and boring tools but they make they they basically have a revenue of millions and millions each fucking each fucking month with a small fucking team so who is the winner here you know what i mean you need to take care of that um Lessons. I want to. I want to teach you lessons, right? I want to teach you the boring stuff. I want to teach you. I want to pop your bubble. Because and teach you actually uh, the good way to navigate in life instead of all that entertainment. All right. Um, what are we doing here, man? We are so fucking. It, it, what is this stream? Is this a podcast or something? What's going on? Um, is this Andrew Tate? Where is he actually? I don't know. I, I didn't heard of this guy for a very long time. Um, make run. Can we... We're gonna have some problems here. Inspect security application. Remove remove this fucking cookie here. Refresh. I'm gonna get logged out. Let's not. I'm gonna press this. Fine. I'm gonna sign in. Alright. Uh, wait, first thing we're gonna do real quick is uh, see if we can get if we have that latency at some edge. Flex, 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 flex. Uh, status, maybe we can do the latency here. What's going on here? Paste 10, paste 10, save that thing for nothing. Yo, 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 yo. Uh, latency. Status batch. Uh, can we delete inside these tags? Yeah, we can. Uh, tracking latency. I don't for my views. I don't need to refresh this. Uh, actually, to be honest, for views, everything in Go itself needs to be refreshed. But um, probably gonna bork out here real quick. So we're gonna track that and see what's going on. Okay, that's fine. Can we see what uh, latency? Seventy-five ms, right? That's nice. Is that true? Is it ms? That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't believe that. Hello, Superbase. You need to log in. Shut the fuck up. Come in, take me. Looks good to me. Uh, Go has its own native template. Yeah, uh, Go has its own native tem template language, but we use this main. We use this um, engine Django. Uh, to be honest, let me actually create, make a new function, func create engine, because I, that's something I want to do for a very long time. Um, what's an engine actually? I will I will show you why. I will show you. So look what I do here. I have all these function here. Format time days left and then i have this one css so i'm gonna copy this uh stuff because i'm gonna add a shit ton of functions and maybe i'm gonna make a separate project where we have this beautiful wrapper around fiber that you can just spin that up and you have the same thing as me and you don't need to do all that bullshit um turn engine some some optimizations here and there Run. So I'm using this Django template template la language because uh, I think the, it's much easier um, and better than the, than the Golang standard thing. Right? Why using Superbase? Uh, why using Superbase? Uh, very important. Why? Because Superbase is Postgres. We don't need to self-host it. Uh, I can interact with Superbase. Uh, if you see my queries, for example, account data. Uh, I'm just do doing my my queries like this. No uh, no ORM. It's just a query builder, right? 
Uh, I also have this tracking. I also have my, uh, well, I don't have this query huge. I'm also gonna write plain queries and all that stuff. So we can directly use a Postgres database that is not self-hosted. It's easy for management here, right? Most important thing is this one, authentication, right? Look at that. Authentication, super important. Um, because authentication needs to be, is, 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 is crucial and you don't wanna hassle with that, right? And with Supabase, it's easy. Right. The only thing I use for outs, I'm using a create super base client and I sign out things. I sign in with Google. Uh, I need to fix this because this is not going to work in production because it's a hard code URL uh, and all that stuff. Right. So I I have GitHub uh, all out, Google all out. I have uh, sent email verifications, reset password, all being taken care of super base. So it already saves me. Mm -hmm couple days of development and hadishes and bugs and problematic problems, right? And if I ever decide to not use Supabase, then I just need to migrate my, my process database, right? If I want to self-host host it, I can just migrate my database. But if you use Pocketbase and you have SQL and all that stuff, it's a little bit different, right? It's a little bit difficult, you know? That's why I'm using that. That's very important if you want to build things fast, you want to build things in the correct way, you search for easy solutions. Right? I know, the Go community, everybody wants to roll his own thing, right? use a standard library, make things yourself, but guys, <laughs> hey, come on. If you, ever, if you ever question why your bank account is at, at a very low level, then that's maybe the reason. Uh, so that is working. The question about that is, do we want that? 75 MS. No. Uh, something that I also want to do, last poll maybe. Not in the, in, not in the table view. We, we don't want to have this in the domains view, why? Because otherwise it's zoomed, right? So don't worry about how it looks, it's zoomed in. Daisy UI, by the way. Why? Because pff, it's just copy paste. I, I, yeah, you just dump it in and, and it works. Um, maybe we could do the DMS here also, to be honest. But I want to do a last poll here. That, that's what I want to do in this view, real quick. Um, and I'm not going to. It's very important that uh, if you build these things, right? If you tonight you're gonna. Uh, I'm going to give you some homework and jump into the Discord community if you want to have advice. How many startups, how many people building projects or startups that I'm advising for free in my, in my Discord is insane, right? You, you're going to get so much value out of it. Just jump and ask me questions, right? If you think you have an ID, ask me a question and I will answer and we can discuss and I will help you uh, move your, move, moving you in, in the right direction, right? Giving you hints and tips. So you need to keep it simple because some people will say, yeah, but why don't you add um, tracking of the, like, like I said, the, the latency because it's easy for me now to track, but it doesn't make any sense because I'm pulling these certificates once a day. But if you wanna, if you wanna provide the feature of checking if a server is up or not, you need to pull at a much faster rate. We don't wanna hassle with that right now, right? Some people say, yeah, why don't you check the cache headers and um, for security reasons, yeah. That's fine, but that's not what people want right now. I don't know what people want, right? You don't know. You think that's a good idea, but you're not, never sure of that. It's the market that decides if it's a good idea, right? So what you need to do is you make something, the core problem, you make that as an MVP, and then you get feedback, and, and users will come up with what they want, right? Put everything in Notion, and by the end of the month, you check all the feedback and you take the most interesting things out of it. And that's how you build your project. That's how you cycle, right? And it's gonna get slow. One user, two users. You're gonna send a mail. You're gonna do some LinkedIn stuff. You're gonna send a tweet. It's gonna take a long time. Three users, 10 users, 14 users. But it's all about consistency, right? You don't need to quit your fucking job, right? And invest that money. If you make $200, $200 from a from couple of users, use that dollar, throw it in ads. Right? Zero profit. No taxes. Right? Oh, now you make 1,000 uh, euro. Fine. 
250 euro, put that on your bank account, and 750 you you whatever the fuck you do, man. Let, let somebody create a nice logo, let uh, put some more ads, whatever, you know. That's how it's. That's how the train goes, right? And after a year, two years, you're gonna have maybe 100, 200, maybe 500 users. And if you do that over, uh, depends how much work you put into it, but if you have a user base, maybe you can sell your company for, for some money, right? Because there are, yeah, like, hey, look, I have this user base. Or you build it out or you hire someone. It depends what you want, right? If you want to stay alone, you stay alone. If you want to scale, you fucking scale, right? If you want to, if you want to go nuts and you have, if you want to go nuts and you do this for two years and you have, or one year and a half, and you have 500 users, or thousand users, and you go to a VC, you say, hey, yo, amigo, here, thousand users, paying users, uh, but I want to scale, right? I want to scale, I need money, marketing money, I want to scale, I want to build a team. I did this for two years, I did this for one year, thousand users, nice, but now I'm going to quit my job, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's all, it's, it's now or never, right? Hey, I'm 28, it's now or never. They, they're going to, they're going to throw money at you, because you have a working product, working user base, that's what they want to see. You have a, a niche, a simple product. They're going to throw money at your face. But if you have an idea that actually is not yet alive, it's just an idea and you're going to beg for money, they're going to, they're going to send you back where you came from. Right? All right. What about Pocketbase? Pocketbase is good, but Pocketbase has no... It's SQL Lite, which is fine. I have no problems with SQL Lite. But you need to self-host it. That be, that means you need to take care of backups and and if something happens, you know sometimes. Uh, I mean, if you have something in the in production, guys, and you have customers and you make a little mistake, what happens a lot? And you're you have no backup or you forgot something, it's fucking nasty, right? And Pocket Base is made for the front end and not for the back end. Superbase also not, but Superbase has a has a goal and client where you can that you can use it and pocket base doesn't right it all depends and we are talking so much today it's crazy where that where the fuck wanna eat Look at this, what I'm gonna do is this. Um, format, time, tracking. Problem is, of course, with these templates, you're not gonna have um, typing support, but hey, come on, guys. Come on, guys, I know, but hey. And then we're gonna use turbo links, and then I'm I swear, I swear to God, and I'm gonna implement this, this stimulus thing, JavaScript thing, to sprinkle your HTML with some JavaScript if you need it. I'm gonna make a repository for that. Um, it's it's gonna be so insane, man. It's it's like, yeah, it is what it is. Oh yeah, it's still in the pre-text. Look at that. It's still in this pre-code text. I need to delete that real quick. Uh, the code is for the fingerprint of the uh, thingy, right? Yeah, 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 that's nice, that's nice. To be honest, this, I don't think they're gonna care about this. Right? But what I also wanna do later on, it's already for later, is basically um, add the possibility to renew a certificate. And then they can download it, right? Something like that. God damn it, 97 viewers once again. This is crazy. What up, everyone? My name is Anthony, and I'm so happy you're here. Man, I'm breaking the record almost once again, man. 97, it's crazy. It's 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 very weird because if I'm if I'm coming up with this all these fancy low-level stuff like these decentralized poker backend, I have fucking 20 viewers. It's crazy. But these things actually were yeah, like I said on the Patreon page, I am, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna give me myself the challenge to scale this thing in six months to 5k MRR, 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 oh my god, 
right? That's what I'm gonna try, right? Scaling this thing solo from nothing and complete going to 5K MRR. I'm gonna share everything, a bit on the YouTube, a bit on live stream, but most likely in my private Patreon community. Check it out. Um, all right, that's fine, all right? Uh, I like that, I like that a lot. It's gonna be interesting because tomorrow I'm probably gonna start recording the Stripe integration. Man, that's very important because I'm not gonna make it a freemium. Although I have a good idea what I'm gonna do here, guys, at this, um, at the main page, I'm gonna make a uh, search field where you can enter your domain and it's gonna track it for you and then it's gonna ask for your email and then uh, it's gonna track it for you for free, but I have your email, you know what I mean? Something like that, a little, a little growth hack. I saw that from a competitor, so I'm just copy pasting it. <laughs> but I make it better, you know what I mean? I'm gonna make it so much better because they don't have webhooks. They don't have Slack messages. They don't have Teams, right? They don't even have Notion. I'm gonna integrate all of that. How, how, how long does it take? Nothing, right? It takes you two hours and you have an integration. Hey, looks good to me. Last check, that th this name is, I'm not convinced that it's gonna be the good name, but it's fine. Um, okay, now we're gonna test this problematic problem we have. Last check is fine here. Okay, cool. So we have a, a thingy here, add domains, right? Something very cool also, guys, if, if I do something like google.com, right? which is a good uh, domain, for example, facebook.com. And then I make a mistake here. Look at this, it's telling me DDD is not a valid domain. And I still have everything in here because you know how you know how terrible that is. That's so you're typing. Some people don't know control C, control V. So what they do is they type everything out with their hands and then they make a mistake. They submit it and the whole thing is wiped out. They're gonna be so fucking pissed, man. They're gonna be so pissed. So we need to make sure that we save that. And how do we do that? Well, uh, you think Golang is gonna be hard and nasty. It's not true. Look at this. It's gonna be in a domain tracking um, handler somewhere, right? It's, yeah, this is a long string, I know, but that's the only thing. So it's very simple. Um, the only thing I do is flash data. I set domains error. Please provide at least one valid domain name. And I, read, I do flash with data and redirect them back. That's the only thing I need to do. Look at this, flash thing, flash thing. And it's all set up in the middleware I have, right? With flash, you see? It's automatically going to detect the flash message and inject that into my views. My user is injected into my views in every single view. Uh, in every single view, I can do just this. I don't need to do anything, just user.id, for example, and it's gonna work. Or email, look at that. User.email, like this, and then uh, go here, go here. You see, here is my email. I don't need to do anything in my, comp in my handler because I set it up like that. So you can imagine that if you have something um, that wraps fiber like I did and all these cool stuff set up already, you're gonna have a very productive environment because I think that's the problem in Golang is that it's either too much of a framework or it's either too bare bones. But the sweet spot, nobody, find, uh, already, uh, nobody has found the sweet spot because Sweet spots are opinionated things. And that's what the Go community most likely does not like. They want it to go away or the dumpster, right? Sometimes you need to open your mind a little bit and embrace that you cannot use HTTP, the standard HTTP library for everything, right? Thank you so much, Yogurt with love. Let's go, 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 go. With a donation, thank you. Instead of sending with comma. Wait, some, how would you renew search for them, ask them? Uh, yeah, so the, the renew certing is something that um, is some idea that spins up in my mind, but it's basically that you can use cert bot to renew, to basically create a new certificate or something. And um, just they can download that stuff. And I don't know, maybe it's not possible. Maybe it's hard, but that's not what we want. The biggest problem is companies have certificates all over the place and they don't know when they're gonna expire. And they are searching for such a tool. There are already some kind of things that already do this ish, ish, but are very, very enterprisey, hard to use, expensive. 
is there some course similar to this stream? All these videos that I'm doing here are uh, recorded on Patreon, on my Patreon page. The full-time Godev, which is at 50% off right now, does... Kind of the same, but not the same. It's more for the people that are willing to jump in to go. It's, Patreon is more already for people that know go, but want to learn how to build stuff with it. Right? And get motivated and get tips and tricks and yeah, just like I am here. Right? But more focused coding. Because streams, guys, like I said, it's like I'm talking too much. Um, but that is what it is. It's, it's one or two week event. And I want to talk to the community, answer some questions, right? Um, yeah, what was I doing here? So that's all fine. Yeah, we want to test this this problematic problem we have. I want to fix this bug. So it was something like I had this full time go dev wrong. Full time go. I think it was something like this dot com, and that's giving me an error. You see? Boom! Look at that. Um, because that's a panic. We're gonna save that with a panic handler. Look at that. So another thing I want to show you is this, what I have, uh, make run, is this, right? So I have the, uh, the stuff like this, wait, where is it? For example, in account, handler, look at this, for example, uh, handle account show. Let's say I'm going to, I can do this, right? Return, app, error, uh, FMT, error, F something went wrong look at that i'm gonna need to refresh here real quick it's gonna be in handle account show look at this wait here show boom wait account account here boom boom you see and i have a flash message and the only thing i needed to do Okay, this is a bad, I know, this this is, looks terrible, I know, but it's just a thing, right? I, I can change it. So, and the only thing I needed to do was return an app error. And if I do not return an app error, an app error is something that I invented. <laughs> an app error is to, there is an error, but you want to notify the user that something happened, that an error is happened. Most of the time, you don't want that, because you're going to get a return from a database and you don't want to leak statements or whatever or mistakes so you can also return an fmt error f for example and uh oops uh bad shit right something like that and if i do this now right then we're gonna get this an unexpected error occurred it's going to okay i need to style this guys yeah but this is going to render a 500 of course it's gonna lock what's happening here right would be bad shit it's gonna lock that uh, but it's going to re return a 500, right? Uh, and then I also have something built in that if my DB returns records not found, it's going to uh, return an... Um, I, can show, I can show you that if you want. What's going on? Wait, let me... I can show you that. For example, domains one. Let's say I do this. Domains whatever, boom. And it's going to return from my database like SQL rows. Uh, 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 and it's going to... I'm going to do this. A 400. Alright, all taken care of, easy peasy. And of course, logging here, nicely structured with a color timestamp, so I can uh, write that to a file and use something like uh, Elasticsearch or something like that, you know what I mean? To uh, filter to filter that stuff, right? Okay, cool, let's get continue. Um, I set up Prometheus and Grafana with alerts to teams, but I'm cheap. Yeah, you could with love, but what you do is correct, but the thing is, you are, a lot of people say that in my Discord, like, man, I use traffic with third bot. Yeah, cool, but that's you. <laughs> that's today, right? Today, everybody is writing Next.js and Svelte. Believe it or not, Next.js, React, Svelte, View, that's only maybe 20% of what's out there. Most of the things, and that's something you guys maybe do not understand, are written in PHP, Django, Java, .NET, 
corporates.net, Java Scala. Groovy maybe, but most likely Java and .net. That's where everything is. These guys, they don't have traffic and, and, and all these fancy load balancers, you know what I mean? They don't have that. It's all legacy stuff and it will never change. Right? Because that's, it's a rolling company. It's an oiled machine. They do not gonna say, hey, look at this. This is a beautiful tag stack. Look at this Svelte. Hey, look at this. This beautiful reactive variables. Ho, ho, ho. He, he, he. Ho, ho, ho. No more use effect. Yeah, no. They are just writing the query or something or backbone JS or whatever they are using. Trust me, that's, that's how it is. But we tend to believe another perception that everything is fancy in this world and that everybody's... Uh, no, the majority of these companies are in big problem. Well, in big problem, they have problems that needs to be solved. They are, they are, you need to understand they have an immense amount of company structure before somebody, before something is, is, is approved with, with the green stamp, approval, some fancy tech, it takes months. You guys have no clue. The world is not as, as, mod, as fancy as, as we think it is. Um, GQuery. I'm a PHP full stack developer and I'm still coding with PHP from scratch. Hey, perfectly fine. Knockout GS, yeah, like all these, these frameworks, man. Like, hey, the same thing with Basecamp. Once again, I take that as an example. Basecamp, they use Ruby on Rails and they use Stimulus as a framework. They don't even use Figma. They don't even use Figma. <laughs> what, what, what he said was, uh, I listened to his podcast and I, I swear to God, listen to all the 37 Signals podcasts. It's very opinionated, but these guys can back it. Look, listen. I don't care if people are arrogant. I don't care if people have strong opinions as long as they can back that up with something. I can give you, oh, I'm this and I that and I built this and you need to do that and building companies and we scale to five and more. But I did this before, right? I did this before. I'm exiting a company as of today. I, I'm, it's, it's GG. I worked there for two years and a half and I'm piecing out. I built this from the ground up. I did this so I can back that up. The same thing with these, with the David Heinemann or whatever. Uh, he said, listen, we don't use Figma. We, we go directly into, into, into uh, we make uh, scribble mockups, like very scribblish things, and we go directly into the CSS. I thought, hey, I wanna work there. That's, 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 that's me. That's completely me. That's what I always do. Look at this. I never, Figma, why do? <laughs> why do I need Figma? This is cool. This is a client. This is amazing. Look at that. It's so... Yeah, of course, I have this fucking thing open, this panic in my, uh, in my, uh, in my thingy. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like, of course, this is also zoomed out, if, if, if zoomed in, right? If I do this, it's, it's clean, right? It's clean, change email, if, if we can't change plans, save changes, so many days, it's fine. It's cool, you know? Why, where do we need JavaScript? Nowhere yet, right? Nowhere yet. Anyway, uh, so let's scale that in. Thank you so much, uh, Matthias Bispo, man. Thank you so much for the 10... Currency the donation. What is going on? Is my is my playlist borked? It is. It's not. Where are we actually? Here. Heavy lifting. Hey, I like that. <coughs> Alright, so uh, real PHP is goaded. How he handles the back end is insane. Um PHP, dom PHP dominates by far, and uh, yeah, and most of the most of the time these PHP frameworks that, that are online are basically also template template based, right? template based with a little bit of jQuery here and there, which most likely are getting, is already ported over to some more of a, um, like these embedded maybe, but I did, I remember that I did these small, um, yeah, okay, I know what you're gonna think. These small angular bits in my application, small bits back in the days when I worked for Bottle Post and all that stuff. Uh, but most of the time we did, we just render templates, right? Because it's easy, if you wanna build a project, you don't want to hassle with the next GS thing and then with TypeScript, which basically makes no sense at all. It's 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 annoying. TypeScript is annoying. Um, I love typing. I'm I'm a big believer of statically typed languages. I think it's amazing. But TypeScript makes no sense. Look at this. There's one guy. I think he's um, what's his name? He has he has total TypeScript course. He's amazing. He's a wizard, right? But his tweets about look at this TypeScript code. And, I, and he's explaining what to do. And I said, oh, oh my fucking God, you are a magician. What the hell is this? What the hell is that? 
That's crazy. That makes no sense. A simple static, a simple typed language is fine. And Go is more than fine enough for me. Um, yeah, if we had if we had typed Python or something, that would be even better. Um, DB migrations. You know, yeah, the thing that I'm using is Go Migrate, right? It's like uh, just like this. But you probably have some some other question. Um, I have this all in my make file, right? So make drop, it's gonna drop my database, right? So it's gonna drop it and then I basically, because I don't do my migrations in development, right? I only make new migrations from the moment I start going into production. Because otherwise you need to have a couple of migrations you don't want to. Why, right? So I drop it, I seed it, and then I do make mech, which is gonna make my migrations once again. So I drop it, I change values, uh, and then I make it again, right? And then I boot my application and we're done, right? Easy peasy. But I can imagine that if you're coming from uh, from JavaScript and all that stuff and PHP and you have all these frameworks and you come to Go and you want to build an application and you don't know how to set things up, yeah, you, you're going to have a bad time, right? But if you have this configuration that I have, man, I even have this, right? This this parcel thingy which is tracking my assets. It's bundling for me, right? That's all, only needs in... in um, in, 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 in development, right? It's fine. Matt Paddock. Yeah, Paddock. Yeah, he he's amazing. He's fucking smart. But he's explaining concepts that I think, man, this is... Why? Why, is, why do we need to use that? That's insane. If you want to do something simple and you need to do this crazy stuff with TypeScript, like some typings is so annoying for me that I... I wish it was much easier. I would pick TypeScript before JavaScript every day of the fucking week. But it's sometimes so annoying to type and to check, okay, what is this type? And then you hover over it and then you have something unknown. And then you have some, some crazy object with an object that wraps another object and... Man, I, then I'm losing it. I, I, yeah, no, that's not for me. That's not for me. If they could make JavaScript, TypeScript, but simpler, man. Like just an int as an integer and you have an interface or something and that's it, right? Fiber versus echo. Um, I'm using, I, I used echo for a very long time, but fiber is the best. Minor things, for example, fiber is the fastest, but it is what it is, but fiber has this. Fiber has the Django templates. Django has Uh, Fiber has this. Where the fuck is this configuration? Here. Pass locals to views. Pass locals to views? I, in Echo, I don't think it's possible. But this pass locals to views is... That's, that, that's a game changer. You would think it's not, but this is a fucking game changer. Of course, for API, it's not, but for what I'm doing, it's a fucking game changer, man. The best way to learn backend development is by making a project. And I think that frontend development is much harder than backend development sometimes. Because most of the time, if you build these applications, these, these projects, applications are not thinking about web scrapers and all these fancy coroutine stuff that you most likely don't need in most of your apps. Uh, that's complicated, I understand. Writing programming languages, complicated. Uh, writing games, complicated. But app development, most of the time, not that complicated, right? Crud operations, database queries, and that's it. Some polling here, some polling there, some management here, database here, database there. Hey. Let us be honest, that's it, right? But front-end development, you're interacting with a user. And what is the most difficult on this planet is user interface and user experience. Building things that make sense for a, for a user. Handling the errors properly for the user. That's hard. So all the front-end developers that, uh, out there, Kudos to you. Kudos to you. Um, okay, now we're gonna fix this error. <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Um, okay, so that was task. It was full time godev, full time.com. This doesn't exist. I track this 
it's booking out. The first thing we're gonna do is this. Uh, the first thing, I don't want panics. Panics are bad, so uh, that's no problem. We're gonna use this, uh, app.use. I don't know how it's called. I need to search that up. Go fiber panic hand recover 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 recover. Recover. That's what we want. Recover here. Yeah. Oh well. Man, where is this? Recover new. Easy. Changing these things. Changing these things. Changing these things. Change in these things. Vim, Vim shortcuts, so basically, uh, way, 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 uh, what, down below. Recover dot new. That's what we want. So basically, if we uh, remake this, make a run, boom, and then now we're gonna do the same thing here again. Refresh, maybe. Boom, it's gonna get recovered. Wait, what's going on here? This recover should actually bag us up and should return and uh Wait. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh I think I need to do this. Refresh here, then do it again. Full uh dot com track wait is that because we're using that in a go routine i think so is that that's crazy need to find a problem for that nonetheless uh, relying on recovery is not something you want to do that's actually bad uh, programming stuff but it's something you want. Because if there is something wrong, your application is not down. Right? Uh, I'm gonna test something because I don't do not understand why this is. Okay, now it's recovering, right? You see? Now we are recovering here from this panic, right? We're recovering from this panic. But um, we don't recover from our um, other panic. Sherry! Yeah. Thank you so much for the $10 donation. Sherry, an old cowboy. Yeehaw! That's what I want to say to you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, gin tonic. Gin tonic. I don't know, man. I never use gin. Uh, probably it is, right? I mean, it's. I think it, it has the most stars. But like I said, the key part of this thing is pass views to pass locals to views. Um, uh, Sherry, it's quite an enjoyable 9.34 a.m. on a Saturday in Reno, Nevada. Reno Range, do you know him? Reno, Reno Range, what's his thing? Oh, Reno Rates from, uh, with this cowboy. Uh, Renegade, you know that, that thing? Oh, man, when I was younger, I was watching Renegade with my dad. It was so amazing. Reno Range, something like that. I think it was named. Reno. Uh, Renegade. Renegade. Not this one, man. It was Renegade, man. Wait. Renegade, Reno. Reigns! Reno Reigns, this one. Yeah! Look at this hook, man. Look at this, man. He was amazing. Look at him. Reno Reigns. Look at that. <laughs> Damn. He's jacked as fuck. And his long hair. I'm so jealous. Not gonna lie. And then, yeah, this guy. This, this, this Chinese. No, this Indian, man. These guys were badass motherfuckers. Renegade, man. When I was younger. With my dad. I will never forget that. I will never forget that. Look at him. He's probably already dead. So long time ago. Look at this, man. If this is not a stereotypical man. You wanna be in the mirror. I don't know what it is, man. God damn it. And if you look like this. And you can code like me. who baby. You're gonna make it. <sighs> Sorry to my dad and bros too, yeah man. Like I said, that's that's the memories I have when I was young. Watching these things with my dad. Yeah. 
like Renegade and then we were watching uh, MacGyver and we also were watching like all these blood sport movies with my dad that's why I yeah and Steven Seagal man oh my god I'm the cook <laughs> so amazing yeah buddy and then we watched also Top Gun I remember that good times good times getting a little bit emotional from it but hey do you just use the built-in SQL package to communicate? No, 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 no. I know the Go community wants that, but I don't want that. So basically, yeah, no, you don't. I have this thing called DBX. I'm using actually. It's not an ORM, right? I'm not using Gorm or something. It's it's just a SQL builder, right? You see, from accounts table where yada yada one account and it marshals these things into your structs and it's all fine, right? It's all fine. Maybe a plain SQL a, a library will be faster, but how much? Nanoseconds. Nobody cares. Right? Let us be honest. Uh, so it's possible to use a Superbase at first and then get the data from it and use it in a process. Uh, yeah, of course. Right? Like, guys, Superbase, that's why it's so good because Superbase is just a Postgres database. Right? It's just a Postgres database. And I interact with it like it's just a database that I have on my local machine or something. But I'm using Superbase because and it's self, it's uh, it's hosted for you. And you can have a free development one. And you have free authentication, email verification, uh, one-time sign-ins, um, all that stuff, Google sign-in, OAuth for, for GitHub, Facebook, Notion, I don't think Notion, but anyway, for, for everything, out of the box for free. And if the shit hits the fan and Superbase is going down, then you just migrate and then you need to roll your own authentication. But hey, that's a fucking luxury problem, isn't it? Too fast, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for the nine 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 dollar donation. Or super chat, or whatever the fuck that is. I don't know. I don't know. Go chat, no man. Like I said, there are a lot of good tools out there, and yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, okay, so this panic thing, so the problem is that these panic uh, handlers, these recovery handlers, they work, but they, they work in the same stack of routines, I think. So the problem is going to be here in SSL here, right? Where we check it, our problem is going to be here somewhere. So... Look at this. So, building. Per Look at this. Who is that? It's time for proteins, guys. How 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 long are we streaming here? We still have a long way to go. Um, yeah. So let's go to my thingy here. Add domains. Something that works. Why didn't I check that? I think I thought I had a had a fucking. Domain tracking. Post domain tracking, that's what you want, right? No, uh, handlers domain. Yeah. Handle domain create, that's one. We had this. Oh, we don't. I think I. Here, we have this one, right? Util is valid domain name. Of course, but that's, yeah, 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 that's basically for this one, right? If you do this, this is not a valid domain name, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, something like this. A regex is stupid, you know what I mean? Maybe chat GPT-3, 4 is going to fix that for us. But uh, the thing is, we, we track that and we get a panic because we get the error uh, here. There is no such host that's coming from the SSL here. So now we can actually test it in uh, in a test here, basically test inspect no cert. We're gonna copy actually to be honest. Uh, funk test. Uh, testing dot t. Let's copy that, paste that in. Do this. Fmt println response yada yada yada, and then press this button. All right. So now, okay, cool. Wait. Of course, now we're gonna. Going on 
This is not gonna exist. If this domain exists, I swear to God, I'm gonna donate everybody one, one dollar. The whole fucking stream. 104 viewers. If this domain exists, everybody, everybody, everybody wins. But it's not gonna exist, right? Who's, who's buying this bullshit anyway? Okay, cool. The, the dial TCP lookup. So we get this problem. The thing is, why does it panic? Why does this panic? It's basically this, right? Con R T TLS dial. Right? We dial. Okay, fine. If the error is not nil, and the error string uh, contains string TLS to verify, you could say, why don't you basically use the TLS, the TLS lib, and uh, compare with that error? <laughs> they don't have that error. It's crazy. I don't know why it is. It doesn't work. <coughs> Try that. <coughs> so string string contains was the first thing I get, well, was basically the solution. So we track this is a valid uh, thingy wingy, and then we put this error in this channel here. And we return, which basically means that we don't not gonna execute this thing. We're gonna get this error here. We're gonna return the error. So why is this panicking? There's no panic, right? There's no panic at all. So why is our application panicking then? Panic and then. Panic and then. Why, why, why is our application panic and then? <laughs> Some uh, special language. Uh, look at that. It's working out, man. It, maybe we are so stupid and we basically... Do it here. Oh yeah, we're ranging here. Look at that. Look fatal out here. What kind of engineer does this? <laughs> hey guys, it was testing. I was basically probably testing things, right? Um, if you if you think what is this, but this is the beauty of Go because this is actually complex code. That's the only complex code I'm probably gonna do, and it's also the reason why I pick Go for this. Why? Because we need to pull all that stuff, and um, we're gonna pull a lot of endpoints. It's very hard to do in another language. And then we have this context. Check the video about context. It's amazing, right? It's like two seconds. We can basically say, okay, cool. Go pull this thing. But if it takes longer than two seconds, you call it a fucking day, right? Something like that. So we don't have leaking shit and clients waiting for nothing. Just like your Tinder date. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, this is a, the problem. Is, oh, I know why I did that. I'm going to exactly tell you my thought process, right? So I was typing this thing, right? I was actually here. Let's say we go back in time. We rewind. And I was here. I say tracking R is as a poll domain. Okay, if R is not nil, right? That's what I'm doing. Uh, this, please type. My hands are so sweaty. Return R, right? And then I was, huh? What's going on here? Oh, this is a go routine. I cannot return my error. And then I was like, oh shit. Now I need to communicate with channels. Well, fuck that shit. I'm going to do a log fatal out. Log uh, fatal. Please, add. That was basically my thinking process, knowing myself. And I moved on. <laughs> and now it shoots me in the foot, right? Okay, how are we gonna do this? Um, these are our weight groups, very important to communicate because after, sh because if you could say, why don't you basically look through these domains in a GoFunk, you're gonna pull the domain and then save it. That's bad because we um, gonna save it into a database with a, a transact. You're basically going to do concurrent writes with your database, which is fine, but you cannot wrap that in a transaction. Ish. Decently. So we first pull all the domains, save the domains here, and then we're basically going to create all the trackings here, which basically is this one. We make a nice TX, and we do a defer function, which if the error, which is this, look at this, so beautiful. This is basically a piece of art. Right, a named return. So if this ad is not nil, we're gonna roll back and log it. Otherwise, we're gonna check if the transaction already exists because uh, the domain already exists. We're gonna, if there is no records, which is my beautiful uh, orchestrated helper function, then we're gonna model tracking insert, and we're done. The Patreon, the Patreon payment is not working also from Senegal. God fucking damn it, Patreon. 
Uh, damn you on Discord. I'm gonna try to fix all your hair problems later on. So that's basically it. I'm giving, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you guidelines, right? I'm giving you, I'm, I'm, if you want to see this real build, then you need to go to the Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, so this fade lot, how are we going to fix that? What we could do is basically make an R gem, right? Which is going to be an, um, make chan errors. That's just so fucking annoying because if we have that, um, I'm thinking about this because this air channel is fine. We can we can pipe that into that uh, right into that air channel. You can but it doesn't really matter. Um, but the problem is going to be that what are we going to do with this arrows channel and when is this arrows channel? <sighs> we could actually. It's already, this is already a little bit too deep to think about on stream. I need to think about this because there are a lot of options. Because if we're gonna pull a domain and there is an error, a couple things can happen, right? Or it's offline. For now. Or it doesn't exist, it's just nothing. What are we gonna do? Not from a programming perspective, but from a user perspective, right? Programming perspective, we can do fancy stuff, right? We could say, yeah, we could retrack it later on. We could do a couple of retries. We could do whatever the fuck we want. The question rather is, what's 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 interesting for a, from a user perspective here? If I'm dumping in ten domains and one domain doesn't work, and I see nine domains in my in my list here, I see nine domains here in my list. Oh yeah, I, I'm basically panicked. I, I'm not panicked, I was not online. My application was not uh, booted up. So basically... <laughs> We're still in this... Oh, this that channel, yeah, man, what am I doing here? Um, yeah, it's fine. What I'm gonna do here is basically a return. Uh, a logger, a log, R. Edge. Right message actually. Yeah. No, 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 that's not. That's not the convention. My login convention is basically I always gonna preface it with a message or with an error. I'm gonna say what kind of function we uh, create. Pull domain or something. Pull domain. Pulling domain. Failed. And then I'm gonna add the R. The actual error, which is going to be the error, is fine. This is going to be save that, right? Make run. So basically, uh, let's repeat this. I have no things, right? That's that's uh, annoying. You see, then it dot uh, zip, and then for example, uh, we're going to bork bork. We mistype this and we send this. Wait, I uh, fucked it up. So we have this uh, no such host here. Pulling domain failed. I know what it is. Okay. I know what it is already. What is the problem here? Think about this real quick. I'm going to sit here for one minute. People, you need to check this code. This is a goal line. It's, this could be an interviewing question. Actually, to be honest, somebody should clip this. Should clip this. And use that as an interview question because this is insane.
Uh, have to show a status unreachable in the table, then a button to refresh. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a fucking good idea, to be honest. Ashton Reef. That's crazy. Not only has he a good idea, his name is already nice. Ashton Reef. Le guys, let's be honest. If my name was Ashton Reef, I would have so much more pussy than I have right now. Because my name is Anthony is fine, but my, my, my last name is bad. But if I was Ashton Reef, that was amazing. I could be a professional football player. Reef, nine, Manchester United, PSG, whatever. I could play everywhere with that name. That's crazy. The weight group, exactly. Joshua, Harvey, it's the fucking weight group. That's the problem, right? So we do a log fatal here before. So basically we, we, do, we didn't experience that problem because it's a log fatal out. You never log fatal out and, unless it's in the main, right? Before boot up. Log fatal is perfectly fine in your main. Boot up, boot up process. We adding a weight group here, right? For each domain, we are adding a weight group. Fine. We make a context for each of these guys. Perfectly fine. We do a defer cancel here and not here because otherwise it's going to be bad. Here we need to find, we still need to do a to doing, a to do this, to do. We still need to fix, find a way to handle this better. But now we return, which basically means is that there is one weight group here. Uh, done here. There's one one little guy or maybe multiple that are not completed yet. So we are waiting for nobody And once again, that's exactly my tinder story and probably also yours. So get stay away from that Toxic app, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, not we're gonna copy this way VG and we're gonna do this, right? Uh, what we also could do is a defer VG though Is that a thing? Is that a thing guys? Can we do a defer funk? Let me do this, VG Tom. Is that a thing, guys? Is this the new play? Is 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 this the play we need to do? Is this the angle? Is is is, is it a defer funk angle? I think it's a defer funk angle. Not gonna lie. Um, maybe that's gonna work. Not quite sure. Sometimes these defer funks they can be nasty. Well, not nasty. Sometimes they. You didn't think about it too good. Damn, it's pretty strange. My access token stays valid for a very long time. I don't know why. Um, here. Send it! Send it. Oh man, my typing is so scuffed today. Uh, and then something that doesn't work, right? Track. Now it works, right? Look at that, beautiful. So now we have um, this beautiful defer function thing, right? Yeah, so basically what could be the option here is that we send these domains here and each time we have a bad one, we're gonna append that, but we set another status. Offline, an offline status. And actually, maybe we should do that. Thank you so much, Aston fucking Reefs. That's amazing. Dude, is that what I look like when I'm coding? <laughs> uh, what's your front-end components and how you can create them? Team, it's uh, Daisy UI. And Tailwind. Beautiful. As along with the Tailwind typography. You do this, you do that. Light and winter. I have the light team, I think. I can actually do uh, dark teams. At the I don't even need to spend time for my dark team, which everybody basically doesn't anymore. Because I'm using DZY. Because I, I'm, yeah, it's fine. The problem will come from this SSL, right? So basically... Okay, so if this is a... Um, if this error is a string contains... If it's a TLS fail to verify, it basically means... It, he has no TLS. Or he has a certificate from another, from another, from another name or something. But otherwise, what is this thing? No such host. Is that an error coming from um, R? No. Okay, so what I'm doing is this, guys. Look at that. I'm going to do this and FMT because I don't know the type of this error and I want that so I can, I can compare. 
So um, I'm gonna do a print ln reflect type of r, which is going to be. Um, I can actually use my test here. Man, that's so warm, man. Uh, net dot op errors. Oh man, that's just so annoying. That's not the error I want because we're probably gonna have a lot of op errors, not only for dial. Ah. Well, sometimes you need to take you, you need to make things work. So we're gonna say if this is a TLS, we could say an invalid. That could later be another another one. It could be invalid. Uh, Certificate or something, another error, and this is gonna be. Otherwise, we're gonna copy this. I'm gonna make it dirty first, right? Because there is a cleaner solution, I know. Otherwise, we do this. Yeah, to be honest, we cannot know what the user types in, right? Because he can. Um, is my, my thing offline? Yeah, it is. It's because my thing is offline. Uh, but a user can... We cannot know that it's offline. So what we could do is this. Just like Ashton uh, told us, we're going to say offline. Domain offline. That's the error. I'm saving that error in the database so I can show that later on or something. So that's fine. We're not going to return an error here. All right, so that's maybe I'm gonna keep that comment out because I'm not sure. So I, it's basically some small. It's a trick that I do. Uh, it's it's I call this. Uh, how do you call that? Like code history. <laughs> so you know what was before, in case you forget. So what's gonna happen is then. Let's delete these guys. Oh, no, now my thing is bored, right? Now I need to I, I need to do my refresh token still. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, oh, oh no, I didn't. I, I basically logged myself out. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm not refreshing, I just logged the user out and call it a day. Um, stop tracking this one. Stop tracking this one. So you could see that we actually do some flash messages or something that we can sh say to the user, yo, you're, you delete your domain, uh, you remove your domain. Right, so if you do send it, sh that's working send it dot uh, zip is also working and then we have something that doesn't exist and we track that okay now we have that and a and a and a and the status is basically something we don't uh, know why and we're gonna fix that real quick data status we're gonna make a new one status offline <gasps> This Ashton to save my life, man. This is crazy. Um, what a good idea, man. Look at that. Why not integrate this with send it and make it all in one platform? No, man. No, man. No. You see, that's that's a problem. That's already a problem. Uh, Jonathan Martins, I love your your fantasy and your creativity. That basically means you're you're gonna be a good engineer, creative, and a lot of fantasy and all that stuff. But it's that's the Exactly the reason why you never finish your project most of the time because you're going to Distract it and you're gonna add as much things as, as possible you, know, you make something very simple and you solve a very very small niche problem And you do only that But make it good right make it the best out there Send to slack webhooks All that stuff so they never forget an expiry of an SSL certificate ever again. Because <clears throat> if your mom or your dad or your aunt or your neighbor is going to their favorite e-commerce website on a beautiful Saturday evening because they want to buy these new Nike shoes, you know what I mean? And they go to that website, www.amazingwebshop.com and suddenly Google pops up Insecure website, your connection is not secured. That man or woman is gonna call the cops to tell that she is getting hacked right now. Because she has no clue what's going on. And she will never go back to that amazing website.com again. But to Zalando or something else. That's why you need your certificates up on order. Because 
Hey, if James at the water cooler sees that his connection is unsecure, he's, he, his money is already gone from his bank account in his mind, right? He's already dead. He's already getting raped in some kind of third world prison or something. That's in his mind, right? And that's not what we want. Uh, offline. That's the status. The thing is, that's not going to be shown because we have a helper. Do we? New. It's not new, man. Okay, I need to do have this index. That's the thing. Oh yeah, this is this nasty thing that I made. Look at that. And I have the solution for that. Um, I have a solution for this because I use the same thing in my um, show page. <laughs> I have this one. Um, where is it? Status badge. Look at this beautiful thing. Status badge. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That's what we need. So we need to go to, I want to GT into this, but it's a template, so it's not going to work. Uh, it's probably in my show handler. Where is status badge? Where the fuck did I? Where is this function? Oh, it's a util. Where the fuck is that? Ah, render batch. Wait. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I know what's going on. Here. Um, we could add that to the locals, and we're gonna have that every fucking where. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Actually, we should this. We should. We should. We should. Maybe is it gonna delete this? Save this file. Open up my main. Go. Go back below. In my functions here, and I'm gonna make engine. I'm gonna paste it all already in, but I'm gonna comment it out so I don't forget because sometimes I mess up my clipboard. So I'm gonna say engine add func. Uh, I'm gonna call this status status batch four. No, I have something bad. Ba some something rubyish. Batch four status func s string res string do boom paste this copy everything here do this press d wait press d press p save Whoosh. comment everything out save again for the automatic formatting it's not working so we made a mistake where is it here delete this save here save what the fuck is going on I see what's going on. All right. Okay, I'm gonna call this status. Actually, to be honest, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Status, save, press enter, and then I'm gonna copy this thing, copy, paste that again in, make this a status, offline, batch, class, batch, batch. We're gonna call, we have too many, too many errors. We have three badges that return an error. That's sad. So we need to go into Daisy UI and find a beautiful color. Yeah, isn't that amazing? A little bit of Bob Ross stuff. Sometimes that's nice, right? Uh, why not? Uh, yeah, okay, cool. I already mentioned this thing. All right. That's that. We're going to save this. So now we're going to have actually access to batch for status all over the fucking place. Not status batch. That's not going to work. Look at this. I'm going to open up this account um, domain handler here. Right, because this is going to have status badge here. Right, that I can delete this. That's gonna work out pretty fine. Right, normally it would. I'm gonna make a run here. We did, we did a lot of stuff like that. <laughs> oh yeah, no, 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 this one you need to refactor that. It's here that's gonna work. Look at that. If you click here, it's not gonna work. No, 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 no,
That, uh, we don't need to reset, actually. It, in our views, we can do whatever the fuck we want. We save. Offline. Beautiful. Here, that's gonna be a problem. Why? Because we need to refactor this beast. This beast here. Should we do that? Wait, what's that? Latency null MSA, of course, because it's 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 um here, this this nasty thing. No, it's not this one. It's in the list, I guess. In the index domains. In the dom in. Yeah, this one. Here. Look at it. This function here, guys. We're gonna we're gonna make this clean. Look at that. What we're gonna do is this. To be honest, if tracking, actually we can delete this whole bunch, actually. Look at that. Boom. Uh, batch for status tracking dot status. Save that. Refresh domains. This looks like Ruby. This looks like Laravel. This looks like this is amazing. Let us be honest. Look how many code did we save by doing that? This is amazing. Then you, you just need to add a function to your to your to your locals, and thanks to Fiber pass locals to views, we have this beautiful function that basically formats the time, tells us the days left, and makes a beautiful batch status, and we have no CSS at all. <laughs> hey, change my mind. Why are you inventing a wheel? Because <laughs> Turkish pride, I don't know, man. Because I like to invent wheels. They call me wheelie. That's fine. I'm not reinventing a wheel or inventing a wheel. I'm making something that will make money. You know what I mean? That's what I'm doing. I'm going to scale this to 5k MRR. It's probably more than you earn in a month. In a half a year, <laughs> you know. So, hey, before you come here and tell me that I'm inventing a wheel or reinventing a wheel, think twice. Wait, there's a lot of stuff going on on my Twitter. To be honest, I make a, I made a fucking post and everybody's local. What's going on here? Um, oh my God, what's going on? I just wanted to let you know that you don't intimidate me. I know you're trying with the tattoos plus bald hat, but it's not working for me at least. <laughs> Guys, listen. I That's a problem I have in my life. Exactly what uh, Edge Lamar is, is telling me right now. Because in life, you know, you know how it goes, right? You see somebody for the first time and even though you don't talk to him or her, you're gonna have an impression. They call that the first impression, right? But it's like you're gonna you're gonna have a view, have a have an opinion about a person based on how he looks. And that's a good thing, and it's also a bad thing. Because I was wrong for a, for a lot of times for people that I saw, or people that I saw on YouTube videos, or people that I just spoke to a, just a minute a little bit but once you learn to know this person a little bit deeper then you say hey damn actually <laughs> actually that 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 edge lamar lamer that edge lamer was actually a nice guy right also the, op the opposite you can say oh this is a cool guy but after two months he's basically a fucking dork and the way you look is very important right because <laughs> If people see me, and it's also in business, but also in 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 li in in, uh, in real life, they're gonna stamp me. They're gonna stamp me as some some tough guy, because I built like a fucking Greek god. I understand, but I actually am one of the most emotional persons, and you can never find. I will never ever physical physically harm somebody. Even though if, if, if there is a problem, I would never do that, right? I raised two kids. 
I train the kids soccer club of my son. They are six years old. I train them. I learn them how to play football. You know what I mean? I Most of the time, like all these bikers, right? These, these bikers on their bike and they look like Hells Angels and all that stuff. Most of the time, these guys are really, really sweet people, right? You, you, you would basically be amazed how many people look like nice businessmen, like nice, decent businessmen that are basically nasty motherfuckers, right? Beating their wives, beating their kids, treating you bad, uh, do not respect you, right? Scam you. That are basically the, the, the people you need to take, you, you need to worry about. But all these people that looks like fucking jacked, full of tattoos people, most of the time they are really, really, really hum humble as maybe, but they are most of the time just normal people that are very loving. Right? Just saying. But it's a problem because if I need to go to meetings sometimes, I need to muck my tattoos because it could give a wrong impression, right? This is what it is. Hey, Marwan, Marwan Felani, Star, that's a good project to monitor, let's encrypt certificates in case regeneration silently fails. Also, your cert bot and everything, that's fine, and cert bot can renew, but who's telling you that cert bot is working? That's another thing, right? Cert bot, hey, it's not the first time that my, that my renewal, because my server, re som sometimes you have these, you're installing on your server, right? You're installing some stuff and you need to reboot it, right? They say, oh, sudo apt install, boom, and then it's popping up. Hey, reboot, okay, reboot. And then everything is fucking down because you forgot to add it to uh, um, systemctl, you know what I mean? It's like MongoDB is not working anymore. Your d everything is borked. So it's like, oh, fuck, your mail server is offline. Cert bot doesn't work anymore, you know what I mean? Everything is offline because you forgot to add this stuff because you did an update. It happened to me a lot of times. Happened to me a lot. Nginx forgot to add Nginx to decent way, so Nginx is all the whole fucking shebang is dead. Right? Happened happened to me a lot of times. Um, but yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I basically don't know anything about sysadmin. But hey, you know what I mean. So what's going on here? I have these pillows under my uh, desk because I suffer from uh, ten scalps. And I run, for, I train for a marathon, and my calves are so tense that um, I, cr especially in a stream, I tend to cramp my my calves when I stream. And after two hours of streaming, I cannot run anymore. So I need to, I lift them up a little bit with pillows from my uh, sleeping room. How do you say that? Like my kids' kiss, uh, pillows are either like I don't know. <laughs> I gotta show you, like this one, <laughs> one pillow. And now we have this one. And another pillow. This is a sleeping party here. You know what I mean? But so I can lift my feet up. And so release the tension. Because otherwise... That's a problem with if you go to the gym and do a lot of compound exercises. And then you run, it's, it's problematic. Because all these compounds put a lot of stress on your calves, right? Because you're stabilizing all the time. You bend over rows, deadlifts, squats. Uh, single leg, uh, Bulgarian split squats, you know, everything, even, even fucking lateral raises, you're with a lot of weight, you're basically uh, grounding yourself in the ground, and then uh, bicep curls, you're, all, all these exercises are basically um, putting a lot of tense, tension on your, on your calves, um, and I have very dominant calves, and they are fucking tight all the fucking time, oh man. Jorge Alar Alarcon, what up, man? Hello, Anthony. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Jorge. Jorge, Jorge, whatever. I don't. I'm so sorry if I pronounce your name a little bit bad. Can Golang build application for Flipper Zero? What the hell is Flipper Zero, <laughs> guys? Please, hey, Flipper Zero. What the hell is that? Uh, so now we have these beautiful status badges, right? Look at that, beautiful. Uh, of course, this is offline, right? Then you're gonna show, and then you're gonna refresh here, right? Check again. Later on, we're gonna pull faster and yada yada yada. I need to check this and 
right? Stop tracking because you see, it's a bad one. These are the good ones, right? Hey, hey, hey. Beautiful. 94 days. Boom. Look at that. All right, we're gonna do some uh, small Q and A, uh, maybe some shit talking. Maybe gonna, if you wanna, if you want me to do uh, a reaction video on, on somebody, please tell me. We're gonna do that right now. Uh, for the people that uh, joined my channel recently, hey, consider to subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comments to boost my videos because uh, I'm a very small YouTuber and you could do me a very enormous favor. Um, to do that, jump into my Discord community where we talk about. Programming, there's a very smart people on, the, on there. Uh, we talk about business, we talk about side hustles and all that stuff, so do that also. For the people that want to see how I built this stuff, I do this in my Patreon community. Um, videos are there, right? They are not all, like I release one a day and I'm already, I have them, them piled up. I have them piled up. Um, can Golang use SQLite? Yes, Golang can use everything, right? Just like, uh, you need to you need to understand you need to see it like this there is no difference between programming languages right javascript php ocaml rust um vlang uh j whatever there's there's all programming languages and they the only thing they do is an interface between you and the machine that's the only thing think about that for a bit right because everybody thinks of programming language that that's better than there is no such thing as better or worse, right? They all have an, as a, have an interface. They are all an interface, right? And of course, some languages are a little bit more optimized for certain tasks, I understand. Some programming languages have a bigger ecosystem, completely fine. Uh, some programming languages are easier to read and to write with the cost of boilerplate, completely understand. It's a choice you need to make as a business owner is a choice you need to make as an engineer. But by the end of the day, what we do as programmers is solving problems, right? Again, we are building stuff. We're building applications, we, yeah. And if you narrow it down, if you narrow it down, because I think you, some people are basically a little bit off track with why you are programming or how the world works. By the end of the day, it all, it involves around serving bringing something valuable valuable into the life of a person of into the life of a group of persons if i can bring value to you you will give me your money like back in the days where i had uh, I was planting, I don't know, fucking paprikas or something, right? And you were planting, I don't know, fucking gember. It's not even fucking English. Uh, you were doing um, tomato beans, if that's even a thing. So you, I want the tomato beans and I give you paprika things, right? We are, we are exchanging for value. And that's the same thing how the world works, right? How do you make money to bring value? You're an engineer, how do you, do, how do you bring value? by making something that somebody wants to use. Can be anything, right? PDF converter. Like I said in the beginning of the stream, somebody is making seven and a half K a month by making a simple PDF converter, right? So people make, uh, I don't know, uh, Twitter uh, things to extract. I saw somebody making something to extract uh, reviews from Twitter, customer reviews from Twitter. I thought, what the hell is that? That's so useless, but people are using that. Somebody is making another, I don't know. People are making stuff. People need that and they give you money. That's the same thing, right? But you think differently. You think the stuff that needs to done, the stuff that needs to be done to come to the, to the, to the end product of serving somebody with value, that's what you make. And that's programming in, in our case. So, Somebody is paying you money so you can fill that gap by providing value to your boss because he cannot program. So he can provide value to his customers. So you are basically somewhere below the chain, the value chain has just made this up. I'm not gonna lie. This, this is not, don't listen to me. 
But what if you can replace the whole chain yourself, right? What if you can just build something and directly provide value because you have that skill. Your boss doesn't have that skill. Your boss needs to have you to fill the gap of programming something. But you have that gap. Why, why wouldn't you do it yourself? And then you use a tool, again, that is being made by somebody that brings value to you, which is the creator of Python, the creator of PHP, whatever, Golang, Rob Pike, you know? And that's up to you what you choose. Your interface to build value to somebody else is something you pick, right? And what, what, do you, what, what are you gonna most likely pick, right? Think about this. If I tell to you, this is, this is important, if I tell to you today, Listen, if you can build me this app, some random app, in one week, I'm going to give you $1 million. Are you going are you, are you to pick Rust? Are you going to pick OCaml, VLang? Some language you don't know. Maybe you're very good in JavaScript. Are you going to pick TypeScript then? Suddenly? Maybe you're amazing in Angular. Because you do that for years. Are you suddenly going to pick Svelte? You have one week to build that thing for one million dollars. What are you going to pick? You're suddenly going to write this in Golang? I don't think so. You're going to write where you're the, the fastest in. You know what I mean? The, the, the one you're the most proficient in. I feel like everything is figured out. There is software for everything nowadays. Mysterio, that is true. And uh, that, that, that's completely true. Everything exists already, right? And that's a mistake I made in the beginning. When I started out, the mistake I made was I was thinking about a problem, for example, and suddenly I came, oh yeah, this is an amazing, good idea whoa, this is a good idea, and you were hyped, and you were psyched, and oh, you were ordering domain names already for it, you know what I mean? You were making a nice to-do list, and then suddenly, oh shit, somebody said, yeah, but that already exists. And your, how do you say that? Your moral, morale, your uh, dopamine levels, they think, oh no, it already exists, oh fuck, what am I gonna do? It already exists. But let me tell you something. If you're going to build something that does not exist, you are going to fail and fail fast. You need to make software. You need to make a product that already exists. You need to do that. Everything works. Legit everything works. You can basically go a random fucking tool, um, copy what they do, make it a little bit better, and you're going to get customers. That's how it is. You, but you need to make it a little bit better. You need to make it a little bit more advanced. It is what it is. It's always work. That's that's how the world evolves, my friend. Right? Every every new software is based on an already existing ID. Notion. Why is Notion so good? How many fucking of these things did already exist? But they did it just a little bit better. A little bit different. And now they are winning the game. But that doesn't mean that all these others are basically broken. No, they, they, they lose a little bit of market share. Right? How many software uh, management systems are there already out? Like these, these issue trackers. Millions. Jira, Monday, GitHub, Notion can do it. Uh, Trello, uh, Basecamp. You have millions of them. But still... If you make a new one, you're gonna get customers. Depending on, of course, if, if it's bad, nobody's gonna use it, but you know what I mean? That's a wrong mindset you have. Like, oh, it already exists. It needs to exist. You need to copy it. You need to. You need to be a customer of your competitor to see how it works, to see what is good, and make the good better, and make the worse less worse. That's what you need to do. 
And I swear to God, if you do it, it's gonna work. It is. It is. It's the same thing with me. How many Golang courses are there? A lot. But I, I, I sold over 80k in 3 months. No, in 2 months. Why? Because there is always a market. There is always a fucking market. My music is burnt. Something is happening on Twitter. I need to check my tweets. I made a tweet and everybody is, is local. Um, well, everybody. If, 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 if I get 20 comments, then I'm actually happy, right? That's basically nothing in the Twitter space. But for me, for a small creator like me, yeah. Uh, why use VS Code as rapper for Vim versus Native Vim? Yeah, yeah, Vim. Um... Couple things. First of all, vis visually, visually, uh, my Vim hurts my eyes a bit. I I'm already fucked up. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I, I, let me install this thing. Let me not see me. Uh, visually, it doesn't. The spacing is hard. To, oh shit! What's going on? The spacing is hard to do for me. Uh, like this nice spacing I have with VS Code, hard. Scaling um, my my UI hard to do for my videos in, in Vim. It's either too non anti aliased and that's first thing, but that's no big of a deal. But second thing is uh, support for other things. For example, if I need to install something, I can install it directly, it works. I don't need to update things. Um, stuff like this, for example, sometimes if I, if I do this, uh, just click this and then I can change all the, I, some I, it, it Vim can do that but in my opinion VS Code bested it out there but that's my opinion and I'm based right it works for me um, yeah that's why just the little things actually some plugins also work a little bit better for indentation and um, VS Code and for some fucking reason VS Code is very fast also. But hey, that's my that's my thing. Um, it doesn't matter as long as what you use is is there are people using JetBrains stuff, fine, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Right? But I was like, I, I was uh, there was a time I mattered, right? There was a time that I could have a lot of dopamine from my editor. Um, I'm using Vim and I, I felt good because I used Vim. I was motivated to code because I was coding in Vim. But at a certain point in your career, you don't gonna get the dopamine from technology anymore or from low level coding or from, from you're gonna get dopamine from making something from zero to something. That gives me the the best feeling that I ever had. The same with my YouTube channel. I started from zero people. I was streaming eight months ago. Eight, I think eight of nine months or maybe 10 months. I don't know. It's like in my terms. 10 months ago, I was at the same day, at the same time streaming for three people. Three, three viewers. With 65 subscribers or something. And now we're 10 months in, and now I'm now we are 70, but I was I was speaking over 100 lately, which is not much, but it's for me it's a lot. Right? It takes a long fucking time. But also over the 15k subscribers, these things give me a lot of dope. I mean, the same thing with um, the same thing with coding, right? Like building something from nothing to something and see that people are using it and scaling it up and make it better and, and fix bugs and add some new features and and see your see that thing gets value that's that's beautiful to see right that's that's amazing i don't really get the and I, I love i love the program but the most of my pleasure comes from leveling up in life leveling up in life 
The goal is never to be rich, rich. I, I think rich, rich is gonna be stupidly boring. I think it's stupidly boring. Um, but I wanna be wealthy enough that I have a, comf a comfortable life, that my kids have what they want, that I can have what I want, just comfortable life, huh? nothing more, right? I don't need to drive a Ferrari, I don't care about a Ferrari, you know? Why would you drive a Ferrari? You cannot even park that thing in my fucking village or they're gonna fucking bump it, you know what I mean? It's like, just just a, a, a nice sports car, right? Like, that I have right now, right? You know what I mean? 310 horsepower. You know what I mean? That's nice, nice little sound. Wah, 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 wah. If, if I like this, that nice sound. You know what I mean? That's what I have. Special color. I like it. You know, sports seat, sports steer. I love it. These things, you know. But you need to work for it. And um, focusing on your editor, focusing on program lines, is not going to help you, right? You need to focus on the end product, right? I afford it and it stinks, man. I cannot even afford when I'm on fucking stream, isn't it? Maybe I did. I never. But I have had head cancellation stuff, right? Noise cancellation, head cancellation, noise cancellation. Can you imagine that? Sometimes I, I fart and I have no clue if somebody hears it or not because I definitely not. But I can smell it, and that's the problem. Anyway, um. There is always different people, right? There are, and I, something I need to learn is like these these guys that makes these I fart and stings thing uh, comments. It's like, man, I should just leave it, but it's like I cannot understand that such people are there. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm not gonna do it. I need to I need to learn it. I need to learn to not go into the in, into these 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 I don't know into this soy dev stuff. Like, I don't fucking care. Get the fuck out of my channel. Man. Uh, beautiful explanation. Yeah, yeah, that's nice, man. Uh, Mike Pulas. Um, I think Bun for calling is a nice option. It's a query builder, super flexible, and it allows you to create a really interesting patterns using generic. Is that true? I need to check that because the thing I'm using right now is also old as a fucking street. <laughs> and I don't think it has uh, an update for, for in a very long time. Actually, to be honest, Bun, I need to check that. How does it call? Just Bun. Bun. Uh, going right. God damn! Look at that. Man, but the scanning thing, I don't really. What is this regional sales? Because the only thing I care about, I don't care about writing these things, right? But I care about the, what puts what what comes out of it, right? I don't want a map. I want my structure to come out of it. <laughs> That's what I want. Um, oh man, but they use context. Oh, I hate that so fucking hard, man. <sighs> Why do they do that? I mean, context, I like the context package, but man, it's a scam. I mean, it's... <sighs> yeah. Man, that's really annoying, this context, man. I, I see the benefit of a context, but guys, please don't put context every fucking way. Eh? Nobody's gonna use it. I mean, if... Oh, man, just make it if you want... Nah. Check out your I will check it. Thanks for uh, for the thing. I will check it because uh, I don't have too much um, queries yet, so I can easily take something better. Let me see how many things they have on get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. 2k2, that's fine. Man, so much code. Uh, Orm or no Orm for data access? Any preference as well? I, I would say, I would say an ORM. I would say an ORM with the option to basically uh, scale a bit out, right? I don't. People hate uh, ORMs, especially in the Go community. But uh, like I said, they, they have no clue, right? They are just programmers making ATK, <laughs> which is not. You know what I mean? If I make ATK, I'm, I don't know what, I, what I'm gonna do. Um, <laughs> but the thing is that an ORM is fine, but sometimes an ORM can be very slow because you don't really always know 
what an ORM is going to do behind the scenes. Man. It's not about that an ORM does a little bit of genetics. Man, did you ever wrote JavaScript or Ruby or Python? I mean, that's way much slower than any ORM you're going to make in Colon, right? But uh, sometimes you're going to have these, these complex queries where it's doing multiple queries that actually could be done if you just make a nice join query sometimes you just need actually just need the idea the id or some name or an email and you're gonna basically have a big struct and your orm is is probably gonna pick all of them that are basically the things that are a little bit concerning and you can optimize but if you can opt out of your orm as you can make these the things that are simple the things you know that are convenient to do in your to keep your controllers or your 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 your, your data functions clean fine and as if you need to do some crazy count stuff or something then you can make you can opt out of your orm and and write with a query tool that they provide or something or, or a plain query and do your stuff but um, like i said companies the most established companies are built on ruby on rails and uh, lara and, and, and uh, symphony and all that stuff maybe laravel that's a little bit too young but uh, most are built on uh, ruby on rails django and they all use an orm for 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 a lot of their stuff so don't come with the come with the statement that orms are bad because go read your your tech book and watch the prime engine and yeah um SQLC, but that's again. I tried. I checked it. The SQLC is like, ugh, man. Then I can. Then I basically just use a normal package. Right? I don't like it. Uh, the compile stuff, man. I just wanna a simple query builder. Like, I mean, yeah, a good query builder is all we need. Yeah, I do have an example here. Yeah, I should have. And then I'm gonna call it a day because I don't know. I mean, something like this, right? So get domain tracking, DB select everything. In my case, if I really need to do, uh, because I really need that complete thing, right? Uh, DB select everything from domain tracking table, which is this thing, right? Domain trackings. So if I need to change it, I can just change one constant, right? Yeah. Where the query, which is an has expression, which is basically just this, uh, something like that, right? Has expression, boom, boom, boom. Uh, which is not the same as a map it has some functionality attached to it um and then one tracking and it basically does this and then call it a day right and you could do joins and everything right you could do uh join yada 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 and then if you really want you can do this for example uh db db um a new query right and then you could say for example uh select i'm gonna not capitalize it because it doesn't need to be uh, select everything no select uh, accounts ID from accounts or something right or basically this you could do yeah if you really want to do some to something simple or if you really wanna don't wanna if you really wanna do something manually you could do something like select uh, domain trackings DT Select all from domain trackings dt inner join accounts on dt.user id is wait accounts a home <laughs> dt user id is a dot a user id or something right order desk something like that i'm not quite sure if this is correct uh sql uh, i'm not the best sequeler uh, but something like that but uh, yeah it, i don't know this is like if you can make <laughs> yeah i don't know anyway uh thank you so much uh, kuan huang ang that's crazy thank you so much for the thingy offset limit for pagination yeah something like that okay uh, i need to uh, answer nipuya and then i'm gonna call it a day sorry for spamming how do testing in my micro sauce i like that micro sauce the only developer is me. What if security breach happened in production? Pff, guys, man, listen. Um, testing is also... If, 
I do tests with small ones and security breaches. Yeah, man, I know, but um, as long as as uh, you use the correct tools, right? You use something like a super base security. It's not not gonna happen really much unless you fuck it up really bad, because you can just use their uh, API to log users in and all that stuff. It's hard to actually give a decent answer to, to be honest. Um, the problem with testing is that, or you're go not gonna test the reality, or you're gonna test just the unit, and you're gonna probably forget to test your updates, code changes. Which basically means that you're maintaining two code bases. You're maintaining and your code base and your tests. Writing good tests is important if you have the time for it. But writing good tests also is time consuming. A matter of fact, I think writing a test, writing features for a test, writing tests for a feature, I mean, can take more time than writing the feature itself. Uh, SQL is fast, I use it in my prediction. Yeah, but how fast is fast? I mean, there is no such thing as a fast package. I mean, yeah, it's gonna be maybe faster in compilation and maybe in, 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 in marshalling your strict, but by the end of the day, if your database responds in 100 milliseconds, it's gonna respond in 100 milliseconds for SQLC and for something else. So uh, don't get fooled. Uh, I probably, by the day somebody is making all this SQL C stuff, I already uh, uh, launched my product. And don't tell me that's not true, it's, it takes some boilerplate and it takes some 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 stuff to do that. Right? And it's another thing you need to maintain, it's another stuff that is there and you need to change and it takes time and it's annoying. Uh, maybe it's good for corporates, completely agree, and it's probably a very good option. 100% agree, but it's not for me. It's not for me. That's cool, I'll see. Nope. Hey, anyway. It's time. It's time to take uh, the day. It's time to, to 1 July, actually. That's crazy. Anyway, guys, thanks everyone for being here on stream. We had a, a very nice viewership. Of course, now it's dropping because I'm basically talking bullshit, like usual. Uh, I want to basically thank everyone for being here. I hope you had something about it. It was a lot of talking. Uh, what is this? Is this mouse actually working? No, I have two mouses. This is b the, the broken one. The broken Razer mouse. But now I have two Razer mouses. You know? That's crazy. And then I also have a Razer keyboard. Look at that. <laughs> Razer all the things! Um, but, um, yeah, that's streaming, right? Uh, it is what it is. So, but fine. If you want to see focused coding sessions, Patreon uh, and my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. And don't forget, um, you're gonna get 50 soon. This is a wake up call. <laughs>